weren't any leadership models applicable for health care. As a result, we had two Fagan Scholar teams really work on research to try to develop a model that was appropriate for leadership in health care. And those teams came up with a model that really found a core principle in patient-centeredness. And the other competencies that really stood out as important for effective leadership in healthcare were emotional intelligence, teamwork, critical thinking, integrity, and selfless service. And those five competencies around the core principle of patient centeredness really formed the basis for the healthcare leadership model. We define leadership in healthcare as the ability to influence others for the benefit of patients and patient populations. This healthcare leadership model helps us to do that. We originally developed the model for the School of Medicine and for physicians. What we found is that there's a need for effective leadership across all of healthcare, and these competencies as we use the model are appropriate for all providers, for everybody that contributes to the care of patients. In my clinical setting, which is an outpatient setting now, I'll work with medical students and I'll work with residents and we'll see patients together. And using the model and the language of the model, I can describe and emphasize to those learners how the things that we're doing as we take care of a patient, how that's developmental for them in terms of their leadership, in terms of the long term needs that they have to be effective physicians. And since I've now seen the model and start to use the model and teach the model, it helps me think differently about the things that I do at, just by nature in taking care of my patients. And it makes me be conscious of the patient-centered approach of care and thinking about that from a behavior modeling standpoint for a learner and then trying to be intentional when I have those learners to describe the behaviors that I'm using or the techniques that I'm using to have a conversation with a patient or to advocate for them or to coordinate their care with other healthcare providers. I think service is obviously an, an integral part of medicine. It's kind of why, part of it is why we all decided to become doctors, because we want to help people, we want to heal people, and we want to be there for them during kind of these difficult times. But I think as a leader, it's what we've learned is there are a lot of different aspects of selfless service. So it's, it's making sure that as a leader, you act in a way where you're inspiring your team members, but you're also doing it in a way where you, you never feel that you're not also going to be a part of that work. And you're kind of making sure that you're, you're just as much a part of the team as everyone else is. Teamwork is the means by which individuals with different skill sets come together in order to accomplish a goal. So in healthcare, the goal is a successful outcome for that patient. Now you might have a various number of individuals on a team that is caring for that patient and they're all gonna have different skill sets. And so bringing all of us together in a room with these different skill sets and being able to effectively communicate about that is important to the successful outcome for that individual. I think integrity takes on kind of a variety of different meanings. I think that above all it kind of encompasses treating others around you with respect and I think it also includes treating yourself with respect and knowing when, again, when we do make mistakes to being able to own up to those mistakes. But I think it also just means conducting yourself in a way where you're, you're constantly kind of thinking of others and thinking of what the best way to approach something is and making sure that you're putting others ahead and kind of considering what their needs are above just your own. Emotional intelligence, I think, is one, being able to build relationships and being able to consistently follow through on those relationships and kind of seeing what each relationship brings to the table. I think that given, you know, all that we've spoken about with teamwork being important in the healthcare model and that's something that we focus a lot through the Fagan program, it's also important to have that self-awareness of what your role is in the team and kind of what your role is in the in the greater scheme of kind of taking care of patients. In healthcare, by nature, we develop relationships with multiple people, whether that be our colleagues, whether that be our students, whether that be our mentors, whether that be our patients. And the effective management of those relationships is vital to not only your success as a healthcare practitioner, but also your enjoyment in your job and what you do. I genuinely believe that all medical students and future trainees should learn to be leaders. 
I think regardless of what being a leader means to you, within your interpersonal interactions with your patients, you're going to have to be a leader. It may not be the type of leadership that you're used to thinking of, but I think within the patient setting, you have to be an advocate for them, you have to be their guide, you have to learn how to navigate that interpersonal relationship. I saw this as a great opportunity to sort of build on the strengths that I already knew that I had and then also hone in on some of the weaknesses that I was hoping to improve on. Thank you.